Hey, good evening, everybody. Uh, it is great to get to spend just a little bit of time with you on what looks to be a beautiful Wednesday evening. I was out earlier today uh, and uh, just putting some new signs out in front of the church, and uh, it was hot. It was, it was getting hot and sticky. To be honest, I don't think I've been outside since then, so I really don't know what it's like, but uh, it looks beautiful through the windows here. As you can see, I'm just sitting in the sanctuary. I'm just a guy at church tonight sitting in, sitting in the sanctuary, and I'm so glad that you've uh, taken some time to join us. I saw some of you logging in, Mom and Dad. Great to always have you guys. Uh, Joan, Frank, Phyllis, it's good to see your comment about the notes. I love that you're a note taker tonight. I do have some more points for you, so everybody grab your Bibles, grab your notebooks and a pen or paper or whatever it is you use, uh, and jot down a couple of notes. You know, before we get into the, uh, the message tonight, I do want to obviously take a minute and, and we're going to pray, but you know, even before we do that, I want to read something to you. This last weekend, um, when we had our time of worship, uh, at, it, there's just a psalm that's been uh, kind of in my mind a little bit. It's Psalm 95. And, and if you have your Bibles, turn to it. Uh, if not, make a note to go there and, um, and just read through it because I love what, what the, the first seven verses of Psalm 95 say. And, and I just want to take a second and I want to read this to you real quick. The Bible says this, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us, let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. You know what I love about those two verses? These things that when we see these things on earth, when we drive to the mountains, as you're coming up to the mountain, it's like, man, these are... It's, it's, it's truly the meaning of the word awesome to see something like mountains or the depths of the sea, to see, like to go on a cruise and you're just out there and all you see is water. You feel about this big, don't you? And I love the way that this is written in here. The sea is his, for he made it. This is God, the creator of all things. That's who we worship. Verse, verse six says this, says, come let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. I love that, and I just want to remind you of that. Again, I want to say this. Friends, don't let anybody ever tell you you cannot worship your God. You cannot pray to your God. No matter what comes, nobody can tell you that you cannot worship your God. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our worship. He alone is worthy. And so let's never forget that. And, and just make a note, maybe read this once in a while, because it's such a great reminder. You know, we are going to, we're going to pray, but <clears throat> before we do that even, I, I just want to make you aware of a couple things. So most of you, you know what's going on with Carol, and she's been in the hospital. Uh, I just received a text that, that she got transferred to Birchwood for some transitional care. So please keep her in your prayers. I'm sure that we'll get some phone numbers out um, so that you can be in touch with her. But uh, just continue to love her like you guys have. That's just a beautiful thing to see. And then also, obviously, I, I don't want to focus on this tonight because there's a lot of focus on it. But I do want to just acknowledge just this, I, I don't even know the words to put to it, this terrible, terrible death that took place uh, in Minneapolis, this this poor man, I mean, to, to watch all of this, there's, there's so much that we don't know about it, but I know this, just to, to see the news and to see the videos and having heard from different people, uh, this is just a, a, a terrible, terrible event. And our hearts and prayers go out to the city of Minneapolis, to uh, obviously this man's family. I mean, it's just, uh, I, I can't imagine what they're going through right now. And so just we will continue to pray, pray for and, and lift up all the leaders and, and everybody that's involved in this situation because it is just a tough, a tough, horrible situation. So tonight let's do this. Let's take a minute before we jump into this message and let's just spend a second in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for 
God, for your faithfulness. And we thank you, God, that we know that, that you alone are worthy. God, that you created all things. And Father, right now, we want to pray for Carolyn. God, we ask that as she has been uh, transitioned to a different care unit, God, that, that she would know deep in her heart that you go with her that you don't reside in this building, that you're not just in one spot, but, God, that you're everywhere. So, Father, would you help Carolyn to be at peace? And we do continue to pray for a supernatural healing in her body. God, would you be with her kids just as they navigate all the different aspects of this? And, Father, we pray, uh, we pray for this event, this, this terrible death that took place in Minneapolis. Father, we ask for this gentleman, for his family. God, we pray that you would comfort them. We pray that you would help them to, to make sense of this, uh, of this, of what happened. And God, we pray for the leaders in Minneapolis, Father, just as they continue to move forward in dealing with something like this, God, we pray that, that you would give them wisdom, and God, that you would just intervene. Father, we thank you so much again just for who you are, knowing that in the most difficult of circumstances, God, that you do not change that you stay the same. And, and God, there's so much comfort and confidence that we can find in that. God, we too, we continue to pray for Denise's mom, Jeannie. God, as she, just, as she is, is walking through having cancer, God, would you just continue to lift her spirits and continue to, to work in her life and in her body. Father, we ask tonight truly that you'd be present in our church where, as we're all spread out. God, that you would be present and that you would speak to us. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, uh, one last thing before we get into this. Um, I did send out a mass email today, and so I know that Denise is up there. She's in, in the projection booth. She's handling her stream tonight, and um, so feel free to send her a message if you didn't receive it, but the best way to do it is going to be send me an email directly, then I'll just pop you right on that contact list. But what I sent out was an email, once again, detailing our reopening plan. And so I do want to take just a second, not a long time, so don't, don't get bored, just a second to remind you of a few things. Uh, the first is this. We're, we're starting three services this weekend. So our doors are going to be open. I just a reminder, this Saturday, May 30th, our doors are open. We're resuming in-person church. So Saturday at 4.30, but then on Sunday we have two services starting this weekend, 8.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m., and so we're doing that to allow more space because obviously we have to be careful with the social distancing. And so we, we want to kind of, kind of in a sense, just thin things out a little bit. So, so there should be more than enough room. Uh, we are, we're going to designate that 8.30 a.m. service on Sunday morning where we're going to make masks mandatory. So if you are a mask wearer and, and you're very committed to that and that you're susceptible or, or whatever, we want you to know that that would be the service then where you can come and you can confidently know everybody here is going to be wearing a mask. So that's the 8.30 Sunday service. The other services, masks are going to be optional. If you would like to wear one, you're welcome to. If not, that's up to you. We will be sanitizing between every service. Uh, we'll wipe down especially all of the touch points. Um, there's just a whole list of things that we're doing, and you can find those things on our website, maranathashisago.church, or uh, check your emails, and, and you should have gotten a mass email from me today. Uh, one final thing, and I'm just, this is the first I'm announcing this tonight. Uh, so starting a week from tonight, next Wednesday, which I believe is June 3rd, we are also going to do something where from now on, at least for the foreseeable future, Wednesday nights are actually going to be our weekend service. And so we're going to have four opportunities for the same service. And so, again, it's just more opportunity for us to spread out. But it's also an opportunity, maybe if you, if you go to a cabin on the weekends during the summer, you'll be able to come to church on Wednesday night. You, you'll be able to come here, and, and you'll get our weekend service. So we'll have worship, and then that same message you'll be able to get live. So anyway, there's four service options at our campus right here. Plenty of room for everybody, so please, if you're up for it, man, we'd love to see you come back to church. Um, check out the details. Call if you have any questions or email me. So right now, let's get into this really quick message. Um, you guys, I want you to turn in your Bibles to, let's turn to Acts chapter 1. Turn in your Bible to Acts chapter 1. Uh, so what's coming up this weekend, uh, this Sunday, is actually, uh, it's Pentecost Sunday. 
and that's 50 days after the Passover, and, and this is, in Pentecost, this is the, the day when, when the Holy Spirit came down and, and filled that upper room, and, and the early church was, was filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and that's this Sunday, the, the day of Pentecost. And so tonight what I want to do is I really want to kind of focus on, on, uh, on that topic, on the day of Pentecost. And so I have five points. And so, uh, Phyllis, I know that usually it's three, but tonight it's five points. So I want you to jot these things down. The, the first thing that I want you to understand about this is it, the, Jesus sending the Holy Spirit. I want you to hear this. This is a really, really big deal. And here's why I say this is a big deal. In John chapter 16, you don't have to turn there, stay in Acts, I'm just going to read you this. In John chapter 16, Jesus says something that, to be honest with you, it kind of blows my mind a little bit. And I cannot imagine what the disciples were thinking when he said this. So Jesus is telling them that he's going to be going away, and, and they're having this conversation. And, and, and of course, they're, they're questioning this. And here's Jesus' response. Now, this is in John 16, verse 7. Jesus' response, it says this. Jesus says, but very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Now, right there, that always, that absolutely blows my mind. And if I'm one of the disciples and I'm there, because you ought to understand now, they, at this point, they've already seen Jesus do some amazing things and, and, and they, they, they know, like, who's here with them? And Jesus saying, no, no, you got to understand, this is for your good that I'm going to go away. And if I'm the disciples, I'm thinking, there is nothing good about you going away. But he goes on and he says this. He says, unless I go away, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Now that's what I want you to understand. And I think I'm going to stand up if, that, if there's enough room here because I'm getting a little bit antsy. So I want you to understand this, you guys. I want you to understand that, that this to me, this, this is that much more emphasis to me on, on how big of a deal it is that the Holy Spirit coming and the Holy Spirit being in us and Him working in us because Jesus says it's better for you. It's good for you that I go away. So here's the thing. This is a big deal. Not necessarily the day of Pentecost, but what happens on that day. It is such a big deal. And I want to encourage you with this tonight. I want to encourage you to be seeking the Holy Spirit in your life. Don't seek one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I, I, I try and say this every time I talk about the Holy Spirit. Church, don't focus on speaking in tongues. Don't focus on, on one gift Focus on the giver of the gifts, amen? Focus on the Holy Spirit. Focus on being filled with him because it's a big deal that we have him in our lives. So that's the first point tonight when we're talking about the, <clears throat> the day of Pentecost. The first point is this. It is a big deal, and we got to remember that. we got to understand how big of a deal it is. Now, the second thing about this that I want you to note tonight is this. The second point Write this down. God's timing is perfect. God's timing is perfect. Jot, jot down another scripture verse. It's Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. I want to ask you if you believe this tonight. Do you believe this, this scripture tonight? Because here's what it says. God says this. He says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. <laughs> Amen, right? <laughs> Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God's plan for our life is, is, is great, and that's what we want to follow. By great, I don't mean easy. I don't always mean trouble-free, but I mean that's the plan we want to follow, isn't it? Because his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are better than our thoughts. What God wants for us and where God wants to direct us, that's what we want to be doing. And tonight, I want to remind you this. God's timing is perfect, even though we may not understand it. 
even though there might be little details of it that may not make sense to our little finite minds and our thoughts, God's timing is perfect. In your Bibles, I asked you to turn to Acts chapter 1. And now this is where we're, we're getting into these, these, these early chapters of the book of Acts where, 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 the, where this is the filling of the Holy Spirit on the disciples. And so in Acts chapter 1, starting in verse 4, uh, this is how I want to show you that God's timing is perfect. I want you to understand a little bit tonight. It says this, On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. So Jesus talking to his disciples. He says this, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is saying, I want you to wait. Don't leave Jerusalem, but wait. Wait until you receive this gift of this Holy Spirit. Wait until you receive this baptism of the Holy Spirit. They gathered around him and they asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. Now listen, it says this, but you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So here's what he's saying. What Jesus tells them is this. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to stay here and I want you to wait. He doesn't tell them how long. He doesn't say on Thursday this is going to happen. Give it another month and then you'll be fine. Just wait three days. He doesn't give them that. He says, I want you to just wait. Wait for this gift. He goes on in Acts chapter 2, flip, flip to Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 1. This is where we see God's timing being wonderful. I'm going to show you this tonight. It says this, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. I want to pause. Do you think it's important that the church be together? <laughs> I do. I, I really do. I mean, I love that we can still be the church. We can be spread out all over the place. And yeah, we can absolutely still be the church but you know, in countries where, where Christianity is, is prohibited, you know they still find a way to meet together because there's just something about a body of believers meeting together, isn't there? There's just something about that, the importance of us being together, worshiping together, learning together, encouraging one another, loving one another. There's something about that. The Bible says this, they're all together in one place. Now suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Now listen, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now verse 5, this is where this whole timing thing it all comes together, and I want you to see it. It says this, Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews, underline this, from every nation under heaven. That is such a powerful scripture right there. Now what, what happens is if you were to keep reading, you're going to read how the disciples, they, they, they came out of this, uh, uh, this, this room they were in, and they all, because of the gift the Holy Spirit had given them, the very first thing they did was they started sharing the gospel in the language of the people that were there. Now, now this all happened on the day of Pentecost. This is a feast that all of these people had come to Jerusalem to celebrate. God's timing is perfect. You see, he didn't, he didn't send down the Holy Spirit two weeks before this. Because this has been 50 days now. They, they waited 50 days. He didn't send, it down, send, send him down a week after Jesus ascended into heaven. I mean, there's all of these things that, that took place, all of this stuff. You guys, here's, what, here's the thing. It was perfect timing on the day of Pentecost when Jerusalem is filled with people. Filled with people. Now the Holy Spirit comes on these disciples. And what do they do? What's the first thing that they're empowered to do? Is to go out and share the gospel. They're empowered to go out and be his witnesses at a time when Jerusalem is full of people. God's timing 
You guys, God's timing is perfect. The first thing tonight I want you to understand is this is a big deal. The second thing that I want you to understand is God's timing is perfect. The third thing is this, is that we are empowered. We are empowered. And I love this. In Acts chapter 2, the Bible goes on and, and, and Peter preaches this, this powerful message as, as he goes out. And, I, and here's, I want you to remember who Peter is. Peter's a guy who, you know, in one moment, he's just, he's ready to cut off an ear. He's ready to stand in front of Jesus and protect him from everything. And, and then in the next minute, he's cowering. Remember, he, he cowers. He denies Jesus. That's Peter. He's all these things. And then Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit. He's empowered. And in Acts chapter 2, I want you to read that sometime. It's just the amazing message that, that Peter shares with all of these believers that are around him. Empowered to produce fruit. He's empowered to produce fruit. In Acts chapter 2, I believe it's verse 41, it says this, those who accepted his message were baptized, listen to this, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. That's fruit, isn't it? Being empowered by the Holy Spirit to be his witness, and Peter goes out empowered, and he produces fruit. You guys understand this. We don't become a puppet. He puts something inside of us. He speaks something to us. He, he gives us a, a thought. He, he puts these words on our tongue, a different language even. But we choose what we're going to do with that. We choose. The fourth point Today, and I guess I, I kind of lie because I only have four points. The fourth point today is this, and this really kind of starts to wrap this whole thing up, and that's that choosing aspect. You see, if we understand this is a really big deal, if we trust and believe that God's timing is perfect, if we believe that by the Holy Spirit we are empowered by the creator of the universe, then, then the choice really comes to us. And kind of like we talked about this last weekend, if you, if you saw that message, they said yes. He said yes. Will you say yes? And today that follows right in line with that because here's the question. The question is this, is are you willing to say yes? And, and now, now here's what I know about people because I know myself. What I know is, is there's people out there that are willing to say yes, but... Yeah, I, I would, but he doesn't want me on his team. Remember, it's that back to that mindset. We're so used to being unimportant. We're so used to being undervalued. We're so used to being passed by. We're so used to being looked at as, as, as secondhand. We're so used to it that we even put ourselves in that area when it comes to God using us, God filling us. Well, I want to tell you something. You know, again, I'm going to go back to Peter because he's just an easy one to pick on. I'm going to tell you this, you guys. There was nothing special about Peter. Peter's just a fisherman. That's it. Peter's John Peterson, for crying out loud. He's just a, he's just a fisherman. That's it. He's just an ordinary guy. He's a guy who spoke just, he just spoke, he just said things, and then ended up having to kind of take his foot out of his mouth. Just ordinary people. but they're people that were willing. Peter goes from being a guy who denies Jesus to being a guy who stands in front of religious leaders and, and shares this amazing message. Why? Because God filled him. You see, here's the thing we have to remember. You guys, we have to take our focus off of ourselves and put our focus on God. We have to stop looking at things as though, yeah, that would be great, but I can't do that. You know what? No, you can't. I can't. I can't do this. I can't get up in front of people. I can't understand the scriptures. I'm a simple person. I'm not a studied person, but I'm going to tell you this. I believe by the power of the Holy Spirit that God works in me, and he allows me to understand. He reveals things to me. He helps me make sense of things. I believe that he gives me this ability to, in a very, very simple way, say things. But I'm going to tell you this. There's nothing special. With me. I am an ordinary person, a person, but I want you to look at Acts chapter 4, verse 13, and if in your Bible this is not highlighted yet, 
than it ought to be because this is one of those verses that is unbelievably encouraging for people just like me and you. I'm standing right here in the sanctuary. This is, this is truth for people like me and you, just churchgoers, just people that sit in church week after week, people that believe that God created the universe, people that believe that Jesus died for them because the Father loves us so much, people that believe that he, he was buried and that he rose again. We are just people that believe, and we're people that believe that this message needs to get out. We're just ordinary people. In Acts chapter 4, verse 13 says this, that the people saw the disciples moving and working. They noticed the apostles and they noticed something about them. And I want you to listen to me now. They noticed that they were ordinary people. That's it. They're just ordinary people, but they were doing an extraordinary thing. And it says they took note that these people had been with Jesus. Jesus. You see, you know what happens is when we look past our own selves, when we stop focusing on me and what I can and cannot do in and of myself, because when I look at me, do you know what I see? I see 48 years of life and a lot of mistakes. And as I look too closely, do you know what I can do? I can find a whole lot of reasons why I should be the last person standing at that pulpit. But when I turn and I look at him, do you know what I see? I see the rock of my salvation. I see a king that's above all kings, above all gods. I see that in his hand he, he has the depths of the earth and that the mountain peaks belong to him because he created them. The sea is his and everything in it. That's who I see in God. And then all of a sudden, do you know what? I'm not as worried about what I can or can't do or what my past is filled with. Do you know what I, what I see? I see someone who could do anything. And then when I read that, Jesus says, you know what, it's better for you that I go away because when I go, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, the advocate, the counselor, the guide, the one who, who's going to speak to you. All of a sudden, it's like, yeah, you know what, I can do this with him. All of a sudden, things can happen. And church, that's what I want to ask you. You see, God's timing is perfect, and I believe that this message in a time like today where we're mourning with a family at the loss of a loved one. A time like this where we're separated. A time like this, church, where there are people, right now, there, there's people feeling hopeless. There's people struggling with addiction. There's people that are feeling shame because in this lockdown time, this, this stay-at-home order time, there's people that have they've slid back into addiction because... They just didn't know what else to do. There's people that are struggling financially. There's people that are struggling so depressed. There's people right now that you, that you know that are struggling with suicidal thoughts. And I believe that God's timing is perfect. And I believe that it's a big deal that he sends the Holy Spirit because I believe when he sends the Holy Spirit in us, do you know what? He uses us and we become his witnesses. And do you know what we can do? We can bring a message of hope. We can bring a message of healing. We can bring a message of, of guidance, of direction. Look around. Look around. Watch the news for 10 minutes, and you're going to see how lost people are. You're going to see that they're clamoring. They're, they're reaching for anything they can. You know why? Because they just want to follow something solid. They want some semblance of truth in their life. And you know what we have? We have the truth. We have the way. And church, that's what the Holy Spirit does in us. He gives us that, like Peter, that, that empowered ability, that boldness to share the words to say, even sometimes in, in many different ways, a different language to speak. But I want to ask you this, are you willing? I want to ask you during this time, are you willing to say yes? God, would you fill me? God, would you use me? I'm not going to look at what I can and can't do. I'm not going to look at, at, at my past. Instead, God, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at you. And so church right now, here's what I want to do is I want, you to, I want you to pray a little bit right now. Earlier, just a half hour, 45 minutes ago, me and Denise recorded this song with her, her singing the song Holy Spirit. And, and, and you guys know this song really well. Um, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. 
come and fill this place. Help me be aware of your presence. This is a, a personal me thing. And so what I want you to do is I want you to sing along and pray along as we listen to this song. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and we're going to close just with us praying together. So let's go right now and let's listen to this song together. I know it's a, it's a familiar song, but isn't that a, that's a powerful prayer. God, help, help me be aware of your presence. But, but here's what I really want you to do is say, is say this. God, I, I'm, I'm willing. I'm willing. Would you, would you fill me? And, and maybe, maybe it's been a while. I, I know some of you, maybe early on at youth camp, you, if you went to an AG youth camp, a Pentecostal youth camp, Wednesday was usually Holy Spirit night and, and praying for the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And maybe when you were 14, 15, 16 years old, you were filled with the Holy Spirit and, and, and you, you, you worked in the gifts, but, but then maybe for one reason or another, you've just kind of wandered away from that. Then I want to encourage you this. God, would you fill me? Would you, would you make this filling new? Would you stir this inside of me? And maybe some of you, you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit. Then I want to ask you to do that. Say, God, I, I'm I'm here. I'm, I'm open. Come and fill this place. Move in me because, God, I, I, I want to reach other people. You see, here's the thing. The Bible says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says this, that we are given these gifts for the common good, for, for the body, to be used in the body. We're given these gifts to be his witness, to benefit other people. And church, there's a time right now for people to be reached. There's a time for people to hear the gospel, to hear the hope. There's a time for you to be bold. So together, let's seek the Holy Spirit in our lives. Let's invite him today, tonight, right where you're at. Invite him to come and fill you. 
Parents, pray this for your young kids. Pray that they would hear from him. Pray that they would know his voice. Church, when I look out, I, I, I remember reading different stories that Jesus saw people and it says he, could, they, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And again, if you look around, aren't there a lot of, a lot of people that, that it just looks like that? They're just sheep without a shepherd. They need to know God. And God uses us to reach them. So together, let's pray that he would fill us with the Holy Spirit and that he would use us as a church. Let's do that now. Father, we thank you so much. God, we thank you that you choose to use us, ordinary people, and that you give us the amazing opportunity to do, to see extraordinary things, to see something as amazing as someone surrendering their life to you, affecting all eternity for them. And Father, as a church, we pray this, God, that you would move among us, we ask God that you would send the Holy Spirit, that he would speak to us and stir in our hearts. God, that you, would, that you would give us the gifts when we need the gifts to minister to the people. But Father, we thank you. God, we continue to lift up this, uh, this family of George Floyd. God, praying that, that you would minister to them. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, you guys, it's been great spending some time together with you on this Wednesday evening. Again, please check out our website. Get the full list of safety measures. If you have any questions, call the office. Send me an email. But I'm going to tell you something. Even though we're only going to be maybe half full, third full, whatever it is, man, I don't care. I, I can't wait to see people in these chairs. You have a great rest of your evening. I do hope you get to enjoy maybe a s'mores tonight. God bless you. You are dismissed to go, be filled with the Holy Spirit, and serve the Lord.